And welcome back to News On. I'm Miranda Khan. We want to welcome back our panel joining us once again. We have Ken Altshuler and Melissa Armo. So right before the break, we were talking about these new CDC guidelines. Already we're starting to see some mask mandates go into effect. Uh, but as we just heard, even the CDC is saying children don't necessarily need to wear masks. So now why are we seeing all these schools starting to want to reenact that, to also make it so where teachers, staff members, and school children, K through 12, wear masks if that doesn't follow the science. I'm a little confused here, Ken, if the science is saying, hey, they're, they're okay, they don't need masks, why, why make that recommendation? Well, the science says that when children get it, they don't sit, have serious repercussions from it. It doesn't mean they don't get it, and it doesn't mean they can't give it to others and can't give it to teachers. So we're talking about protecting the entire school, not just children. We know children can't get vaccinated. They can still be carriers even if they are vaccinated. So the logic is this, this is the uh, Delta variant is very contagious. We have teachers who can get it, and even if the teacher's vaccinated, they become carriers, so it's a chain reaction. I've already said that I don't think wearing masks is that big of an imposition. I know some people disagree with me, but I think it's a smart thing to do. It's a precaution we can do. It's a small thing to do to protect people. And let's not forget, it's not just the, the teachers' unions who are advocating with this. The American Academy of Pediatrics has also said they recommend all, everybody in schools wearing masks. So I think that it's kind of a cautionary recommendation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a big imposition, and I support it. Well, then let me ask you this, because this big argument has all been about following the science. And what I've heard from Democrats over and over again is that the science evolves as we learn more information. But there's a report from Just the News uh, suggesting that this recommendation was based on an unpublished study, excuse me, from India, um, that it was not uh, even fully published and that they're basing it on without having all the information there. Does that change your mind at all with some of these recommendations that we're basing it on science, science itself that hasn't been proven yet? The study hasn't even been published. Well, I don't think the science is the issue here because we, we're saying that children don't have bad reactions to it. So why do we need masks? We need masks because we do know that the Delta variant is more contagious, highly contagious, and very quick to spread. So we know that we know that from anecdotal evidence of not evidence here in the united states of america so that shouldn't be based on any any report from india or otherwise the point is it's contagious children are carriers they can infect teachers they can infect other people and that's why we wear masks not because children can get sick from it that's not the reason Alyssa. I think the problem is we're going to have to live with COVID. If you're making kids wear masks because you're worried about a Delta variant, there will be another variant, another variant, and another variant. So therefore then are we going to say that our children have to wear masks in school forever? Are we going to start saying that everyone in the country has to wear a mask forever, whether they're vaccinated or not? If the teachers are worried about getting it, then they can get vaccinated. End of story. I mean, at this point now, I think the teachers are looking for reasons, to be honest with you, not to go back to full-time classes. Randy Weingarten went on an interview just this week and said she can't even guarantee that schools are gonna fully reopen in the fall. Maybe, maybe they're trying. What's what's the trying? If you look at the last year of the, what's happened to these children, it, 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 it's awful. I mean, it's awful. Now, it's up to you. If you say you want to wear a mask and you want to protect yourself, fine. The teachers can wear a mask. To make the kids wear masks, I think, is over the top. Um, and it's not just about spreading it to the teachers. The teachers can wear their masks and they can get vaccinated. That's my opinion on it. I appreciate you sharing your opinion. That's also going to be the focus of our new question of the day for our viewers so they can also share their voice. Love to know their thoughts on that. That's coming up in a few minutes. But as we mentioned at the top of the show, a compromise happened. Um, it, it's rare. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time we had one. But the $1 trillion infrastructure bill uh, making its way through its first major hurdle that was in the Senate. This has been going on for, I say weeks, but I think it's been going on for months. Um, but not everyone's happy with it, including former President Donald Trump uh, blasting Mitch McConnell for doing this, um, for compromising with the commie Democrats, as he phrased it. Uh, but let's not forget, he also wanted to try to get infrastructure uh, passed when he was in office as well. But AOC, I never thought this would happen, seems to be somewhat in agreement 
uh, with the president, not happy with it either, slamming Democratic Senator Kristen Sinema on Twitter after announcing that she would not support Democrats' $3.5 trillion spending plan. So she's not very happy either. Uh, but 17 Republicans were happy with this, including Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham, to name a few. Uh, Melissa, what are your thoughts on this infrastructure bill, and where do you see it headed? Do you see the president signing off on this? He's probably going to sign off on it, despite despite what she tweeted, despite what she said. Or I don't think Mitch McConnell would have been going along with it. They want to push something through. They've been talking about infrastructure, like you said, for several years. I think the problem is the timing on this is really bad right now to spend this kind of money. There's no way that they're not going to increase taxes. They will increase taxes. Before Biden was talking about increasing taxes on people that earn more than $400,000 a year, they are going to increase corporate taxes. They're going to increase taxes on everyone to pay for this. There's no way that they can't. And I think the timing of this is bad. We're in a period of inflation. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, do we really need this right now? And if so, do we need everything that's in the bill to spend this much? Good questions. Uh, Ken, care to well, first elaborate? We, well, we should rejoice in the fact that AOC and Donald Trump agree on something. That's that's historical. And uh, for, the, for the Senate to have a bipartisan agreement, I think, is a huge step forward. The problem, of course, is, as you said, Miranda, the, 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 lip, the progressives think it's not enough. They want the $3 trillion or $3.8 trillion bill to go through. There are some Republicans that don't want to spend the $1 trillion. I think it will go through. I think this is a plan that has long-term benefits to the country. I agree with Senator Sinema. I don't agree with the $3.8 or $3 trillion package. I think I agree with Melissa. If you think this is bad, $3 trillion or $3.8 trillion, that would be a disaster to our economy. But we do need to have some work on the infrastructure. We need to improve our uh, our roads and highways. But should it be that much? What about the price tag, though, and going to what Melissa was bringing up, saying, I just don't see how this can happen without raising taxes, especially corporate taxes, and is this the best time to do it? Again, we're still in a pandemic, and now you got the CDC recommending, regardless of whether or not you've been vaccinated, to wear your mask again. Well, as you mentioned, Donald Trump had a proposal that was close to $2 trillion. So this is half that amount. It's but we a weren't in a pandemic and we weren't seeing inflation like we are now. I agree. And the reason we have inflation is partly because of the pandemic and partly because we're getting outside so fast, the economy's heating up. And I agree with you that that is a danger sign. And if things don't cool off quickly, we could be in far more danger. I still think $1 trillion to, as a compromise and as a substitute for three trillion dollars, and because that's a real risk, and I and I think three trillion dollars is a disaster. One trillion dollars, I think we can afford it. I think over the long haul, a ten-year plan, I think we can do it without raising taxes, and I think it does fuel the economy in a positive way. And we, yes, we have to watch inflation, but I think it's a positive move. I support it. All right. Well, speaking of inflation, uh, that is a question that we've been asking our viewers for quite some time. Melissa, as you mentioned, uh, the forecast not looking so great. Um, that also being um, felt around not just this country, but around the world. Uh, but as we mentioned, President Biden said just last week that this was going to be temporary, that he didn't think this was going to be permanent, and that he thought this spending would actually lower inflation because he believes it's going to create more jobs. So we're going to have our viewers weigh in on that. Uh, do we have some of those comments? I think we do. We do. We're going to share some of those a little bit later. But Ken, Melissa, thank you as always for joining us for this edition of News On. Always appreciate your opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. And thank you survived you, it, Ken. <laughs> and you thank survived, you. Ken. See? Thank you very much. <laughs> appreciate it. All right. See? Always a good time here. All right, so a lot of things that we covered there. And again, whenever you hear um, these opinions, you're more than welcome to share your own opinion on any of these topics by finding me at Real Miranda Con. Hashtag share your voice. Again, we're going to share more of your responses about inflation. Do you think more spending, like the president seems to think, will actually bring inflation down? We're going to share some of your thoughts. Plus, we're going to reveal our new question of the day. And it centers around, you bet it. You got it. Those masks. What do you think about that? We'll be right back. You're watching News On.